Hi, this is Anthony Parent of IRS Medic. And we had some amazing news on June 30th. Um, the US Supreme Court passed um, one of the, the best law or the best cases of all time that I can think of. And the case is West Virginia versus EPA. And really for the first time, there's meaningful control on our out of control regulatory state. And I just, we, I was just talking with our uh, with our today's guest uh, Keith Redmond and John Richardson about this case that just came down, and we're still trying to absorb everything. I haven't gone through the entire opinion, and John was just going through it. So, so John, what's what's uh, what do you think of this case? And I know that we're going to be talking about this a lot in the future. We will get to House Resolution fifty eight hundred, the commission, but this is something that has to be discussed just because it's such big news. John, what what would you say that's interesting about um, this news? Well, first of all, it's, it's, it's going to be one of these seminal decisions coming down from the court. I mean, the, you know, the aftershocks of this uh, are, are, are going to be truly extraordinary. But uh, I mean, I, I have not read it, okay, in great detail. So I'm sort of, you know, still a stage of reading the, the media article stuff. But at a bare minimum, what is very, very clear, and this is just what is shocking, is that there are actually limits on what these government agencies can do. And, you know, on that level, without, you know, spoiling it by getting into the details too much, <laughs> I think this is an extraordinary step. You know, uh, let, let's see, this, uh, today is what, July the 5th, yesterday was July, the 1st. First of July okay, the 4th of July. And, uh, you know, this is a great step towards uh, freeing Americans. Isn't it incredible? I, I am just, I'm incredible. Now, I would say this, that, you know, I was, I got, this was going under the radar for me. I wasn't a paying attention to it. And with the very simple reason that um, the courts have always rubber stamped every regulatory power and it's pretty obnoxious. And I guess I just accepted the fact, well, no, they're always, you know, the people are always going to lose. The regulators always win. That's the name of the game. So it was about a week ago, um, I got a tip that, no, this actually might go the other way. And then was given some, uh, Alito gave some uh, tip that, that, that it might go. Um, and the thing that I find alarming is how some, and I would say most of the legal community is reacting. John, what have you seen? Well, you know, I'm still say just reading the various media articles, but I can tell that there is that there are a lot of malcontents out there who who really, really do believe that uh, it's entirely uh, right, just, and appropriate uh, for these regulatory agencies to run the lives of everybody in the country. Uh, I, I don't agree with that. Obviously, I yeah. the impression is you don't either. They, they well, they're acting like it's a funeral, <laughs> and that that's my opinion. They're acting like it's a funeral. And I have news for you guys. It's the first of many. This is the first of many funerals coming your way. The regulatory state as we know it is going to come to an end because here's the thing is, is as you read this opinion, and this is the problem, and we'll get to, we'll move on to 5800. But as you use your imagination and you imagine a country where elected officials are responsible to the people who vote for them, and they can't say, Oh, it's the regular, it's it's the it's the IRS's fault. No, it's your fault now. You can't go and blame things on the IRS. And that, and that is what this is this this opinion is getting to. Some sort of thing called a representative democracy, not something where Congress gives a broad authority to regulation, hey, uh, to a, to an uh, to an agency. Hey, agency, make good laws. Because that's what we get to, and that sort of leads me to what House Resolution 5800 is. Because to me, it was a bad, bad idea to begin with. Um, House Resolution 5800 is today's topic. And this is a proposal to establish a commission to study how federal laws and policies affect United States citizens living in a foreign country. And I said, well, this, is a, this isn't even a law. You're, you're not even passing the law. You're, you're passing a meeting agenda that will have no impact of anything. So, and I think this shows you how important and how essential a holding like West Virginia is because this is the level of bill 
that we are getting submitted to us. And last week, remember how we were talking about how ridiculously poor written the, the other bill was? They couldn't even they couldn't even put in the schedules. They couldn't right. even put in the tax form schedules uh, and other things to be assigned by the commissioner. Right? When you see that, you're like, well, you guys don't even you don't even want to talk about it. You don't want to, you don't want to hear from your constituents. Why don't why don't you have the hearing with your constituents instead of some regulatory board authority who is accountable to no one? So here's the thing is I'm starting to get a little excited about this. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. And that idea of freedom. And that idea of an actual, and then you start to think, well, maybe the problems with our country isn't right wing and left wing. The problems with our country is that Congress is accountable to no one. Maybe that's actually the problem, because maybe if Congress was actually accountable to people, we wouldn't have this nonsense. We wouldn't have it. We wouldn't have these fights. Oh, you don't like them? They did that? You don't like the IRS? Get out the guy who voted for it then, right? There you go. Um, so it's so I think that's why this is going to be the beautiful end of the regulatory state. And at a point where we won't even believe that we subjected ourselves to it. That's what I'm going on. So now, Keith. Yes. House Resolution 5800 to establish a commission to study how federal laws and policies accept U.S. citizenship taxation affect. <laughs> you know, Keith, I think this is a terrible idea. A bad, bad idea, and I think it's a complete waste of time to present something like this. What do you think? Well, well, I, I agree and I don't agree. And okay. the part that I agree on is that if this commission is is being proposed just for show and nothing is going to happen, right. then it's terrible, number yes. one. Number two, just going by the substance of the bill right now, they don't even talk about taxation. <laughs> in it, which I find absolutely not only appalling, but disrespectful, insulting, playing Americans overseas for fools. Number three, they don't even talk about renunciations, which is the, uh, the, the consequence of this whole situation. It's as if you can't talk about renunciation because heaven forbid you give up your U.S. citizenship. Well, people are forced to do so. But Having said all this, and this is where I disagree, is that if this commission is established and the end objective is, is to change the law, then that's a good thing to bring this uh, terrible situation and the continued terrorization of Americans overseas and the other populations, accidental Americans, green cards holders living overseas, if it's to really sincerely change law then i'm all for the commission all right well i think let's get let's get to the powers of this commission because what is this commission going to do right In section five of the bill we have the powers of the commissions okay and as i said hey hearings and sessions <laughs> yeah. the commission day for the purpose of carrying out this act hold hearings sit and act at times and places take testimony and receive evidence as the commission considers appropriate. Okay. As I said, they have the ability to hold, hold zoom meetings. All right. That's great. We have a law to, to authorize zoom meetings. Uh, next power powers of members and agents, any member or agent of the commission may, if authorized by the commission, take any action, which the commission is authorized to take by this section. Okay. So if you want to call a meeting, you can call a meeting. Okay. That's what we got so far. Now let's get to, to see. Obtaining official data, subject to Section 6103 of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986, the Commission may secure directly from any federal department or agency such information as the Commission considers necessary to carry out this act. Upon request of the chairperson of the Commission, the head of such department or agency shall furnish such information to the Commission. Okay, so you have the ability to do a quicker FOIA than other people, I guess, right? There's no, right. no, there's no data that, that you're going to get that the public can't get. I guess you just get them yeah. quicker maybe, but a lot of times it's probably quicker just to request it yourself than to use the government yeah. program, honestly. And then we get to the all-important subsection D, or the powers of the commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Now, now I'm going to say this word. It might sound weird. Males. And I'm going to spell that word for you. M-A-L-S, period. And I mean that. That's, that's that actually it says males. The commission may use the United States males in the same manner under the same condition as other departments and agencies of the United States. 
Cool. There you yeah. go. There's powers of commission. There you go. That's what the commission's going to do. So, and there's uh, nothing in there. So how is? And this is where I agree that this commission is BS. If this is all they're going to do, well, I don't understand what this. How I don't understand how this is going to help Americans overseas. I have. Well, they have no, duties. I don't. Have, so, hmm? so their duties are to study things, and so let's talk about what they're going to study, and that's in section four. Study in general, the commission shall conduct a study on how federal laws and policies affect United States citizens living in foreign countries, including civilians and members of the armed forces. Okay, matters studied. The matters shall include the following federal financial reporting requirements for United States citizens living in a foreign country, including the requirements. There we go. The fire engine E2 of Wallingford is going by right now. I live right next to the firehouse. There it goes. Okay. Um, uh, so set Title 31, uh, basically matter study. They're going to study Title 31, which is the FBAR. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's good. They're going to study uh, federal policies uh, requirements that affect the ability of the United States citizen living in a foreign country to access foreign and domestic financial institutions, including requirements under Chapter 4 of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986, commonly known as the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, and requirements affecting financial institutions imposed by the Uniting and Strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism act of 2001, the U.S. Uh, so yeah. now this is where this is where. I'm going to say, I'm going back to this is the dumbest idea in the world. I'm you sorry, don't I, need a yeah, study for this. You only no, need to study no. if you don't want to take action. This right, is nonsense. Right. No, I agree with that one because there's already, there's already been a hearing about the, the, the downfalls of FATCA. We've yeah. already had somebody who was in the military and who had oh, yeah. to renounce and was forced to renounce. And we were all there and they and nothing came of that particular hearing. So, yeah. you know, the idea Girl of a Maloney commission, I agree with, but well, I don't she understand there, what the purpose is. Testimony. Why does she need to pass this law? She knows firsthand. Right. She doesn't need to study anything. She just doesn't want to act because she doesn't want to give up that regulatory state. And now you kind of see how they're all in it together. They don't want to give up that regular, they're, they're buddies, all their buddies. Uh, we also have um, other things that they, they, they may study, federal requirements for a spouse, child, or other family member of a United States citizen living in a foreign country who is not a United States citizen to become a United States citizen. They're going to study that. Okay. Um, the ability well, but, they're, but they're missing everything. They're missing everything that this commission can do. Because right. they want to miss everything important. Because right. this is nothing but where I, I'm sorry, you know, maybe I missed it, but is there anything in there about talking about the even remote possibility of severing US citizenship from tax residency? Is that no. going to be analyzed no. or discussed? No. No. Well then I'm there, not for the there, commission there, if that's what no. There, it makes no things, sense. The only things they're going to discuss are the things we already know for one hundred percent fact are the biggest problems in the world. They're going to study them. Oh, yeah. oh, you were you 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 weren't there, Carol Maloney. You weren't there. Oh yeah, I had to renounce my citizenship. Right, April two thousand seventeen. She was there. She was there. You yep. weren't there. You need a study. Do you think those people were lying? If you think they were lying, why don't you bring perjury charges against them? What's going on? Why won't you act to the people who already gave you testimony? They already did. But yeah, yeah oh no, no, we need to study this more. Classic. Classic, classic move. And I would just say, if you well, were remember, that, remember, Anthony, it is an election this, year. You're an idiot. It's, you're, it's an election you're, year. It's an yeah, election if year. You, if you support this, you want to be fooled. You yes. want to be fooled. You want to be lied to. Right. You I'm kind of continue to be lied to. I'm kind of dying to hear from John. He's absolutely silent right now. I wonder what he's thinking. All right. What, what are you thinking, John? <laughs> well, I. I wrote a blog post on it, so I'm not thinking. I already wrote the blog post. That's um, true. I think that, first of all, if we look at just this bill, um, technically, the language would allow for the discussion of U.S. tax policies and renunciation, but there's a list of things that the commission is required to learn about, discuss, and listeners need to understand absolutely positively 
that uh, U.S. taxation, U.S. tax policies and renunciation are notable only in their absence. And this is, mm -hmm. I think, a gigantic problem. Now, this doesn't mean that, you know, this couldn't be amended, et cetera. But when one considers this bill in conjunction with the other two that we've already talked about, what they all actually have in common, and this is very important, they may talk about different subjects, but what each of these three has in common is they assume the continuation of the U.S. citizenship tax regime. They yes. all assume that. Oh, yeah. And I think it's extremely important that U.S. voters abroad uh, recognize this. Uh, I think if you really want to vote for these people, go ahead. But I think you're being duped, at least at present. Because for the life of me, I cannot understand how, I mean, this one thing, Anthony, are you a James Bond? Who's your favorite James Bond? Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, Roger Moore, believe it or not. And I know you're supposed I know to that say Sean, I know, I know you're supposed to say Sean Connery. Well, I know one of those guys who will say so there, Roger. There's three bills here, right? There's three bills. And yeah. each one of them ignores the problem of citizenship taxation. There's a great scene from the movie Goldfinger. That's a Sean Connery one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where Goldfinger says to Bond about their meetings, he says, well, the first time is happenstance. The second is coincidence. But the third time, it's time for enemy action. And <laughs> I think it is absolutely important that individuals understand this. Now, that's not a reason to vote against having a commission necessarily, but it is a reason to be very, very wary of this and to absolutely not assume, not assume that these legislators, just because the title of a bill, and let's look at the title of these bills, you know, Commission to Study Americans Abroad, Tax Simplification for Americans Abroad, Overseas Americans Financial Access Act, we've talked about all of these things and they're independently for various reasons, a limited value, but again, what they all have in common, and this is the key, this is critical, is they absolutely, positively assume the continued existence of citizenship taxation. The kindest thing you could say about any of them is they just want to make citizenship taxation work better. That's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very true. You know Very what? true. Very, yeah, that would be the kindest thing you could say about them, right? But there's no indication that and I and I think what and you were mentioning this I think last week too um you know they're trying to to just sort of cement down that citizen based taxation more than anything more than trying to help though they want to get this cemented down hey yeah, everything's cool right. as long as we're going to do citizen based taxation these are these bills, uh, unfortunately, or these proposed bills actually reinforce citizenship taxation. Now, I just remember that on July the 7th, uh, there is a, uh, a meeting in Carolyn Maloney's district, whatever. Uh, if you go to Keith's group, you can find this. I think it's, it may have been organized by Democrats abroad. I don't know. Yes, it is, and which is but, American Expatriates group on Facebook for people who don't is, know. It's an opportunity to put questions to uh, Congresswoman Maloney uh, on this, and, and I would highly, I would encourage people to get in and do just that and say, you know, we just want a straight answer from you, Congresswoman. Do you or do you not support citizenship taxation? Yeah, I think very tough, pointed questions need to be posed to these individuals. Absolutely. And I don't think, and I don't think an acceptable answer, which is what I would presume you would get, is no, I don't support it, but I don't see it going away. I think I that, that answer should be duly noted, and I think the people should vote accordingly. I, I don't think she would ever say that. I would. I don't think she'd ever say that. She'd give a non-answer that doesn't go that far. Well, well I think. She, she did last time, Anthony. She did say that she didn't see um, citizenship-based taxation going away. I'm paraphrasing. But when there was a meeting with Jim Bitterman, who hosted it from CNN. Okay. Yeah. So okay. she did yeah. say that okay. degree. Yeah. 
Well, we, I think it'd be great to get some questions to her. Uh, that's not too yeah. far from me, but oh boy, I have to go down to, I have to go so down he, to uh, Westchester County and all the way down there. Oh man, it's a hard no, it's, a, it's, a zoom. <laughs> it's a Zoom. It's a Zoom. It's a Zoom. Oh, so Zoom. You, oh. You, so you might need to... No, oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm not a constituent. I'm not a. I'm not a constituent. Well, right. apparently, uh, my reading of it is that anybody can sign up for this. Thing. Oh, yes, that is correct. Uh, you know, oh. if that's the case, I, I, I certainly, I would encourage each of you, and I would actually encourage anybody with an interest in this topic to do so, because, you know, it's an opportunity to, uh, you know, at least uh, get on the record uh, something like. Why are you proposing three bills when the only thing that's clear about each of the three is that they don't support ending citizenship taxation? Right. Yeah. I think it's a reasonable question. Well, I so think every, every, the, everybody everybody in Congress should be on record. Do you support citizenship-based right. taxation? Let us know. Well, every, here's a question for and you, that, And that's the whole point. Uh, you should be voted right. or out of all, you know, you... Uh, your constituents should be able to vote on what your actual position is, not what your stated position is that allows for the administration, your, uh, uh, an agency to do whatever they're going to do. And you're, oh, I, I couldn't stop them. I'm just poor Carolyn Maloney over here. All I can do is pass other laws to reinforce citizenship based taxation. I can't propose any laws that would end it. Um, no, so that, I, I, think that, so, I think that these people need to be voted out of office. Uh, right. If, if well, not, I guess you're. I would I go guess you're, further. I would go a little <laughs> further on this, uh, everybody. <laughs> and one of the things I'm noticing, uh, just by you know looking at these Twitter discussions and various social media, is that you know people always say, "Well, this group supports RBT or that group support RBT," and you know they actually don't support RBT. And I think the time has come to change the dialogue, the discussion to. And here's the question. Do you or do you not support severing U.S. citizenship from the definition of U.S. tax residency? You know, that is, the question may be harder to understand, but it's a lot clearer because, you know, it doesn't allow for me, you know, what's RBT supposed to mean? Yeah, no, 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 no right. And even, and even, the, even when you say sever, severing the two, those words kind of all mean the same thing. So it's hard for people to see the, mm. that, that it's hard to see the point, what you're making there, severing, cause it, you're like, what? Citizenship what is irrelevant for tax residency. Right. Citizenship is irrelevant for tax residency. That, you know, that, that's what needs to be achieved here. Not- Right, so, so, so my, so my, my question here, gentlemen, is cause we have gone through these three bills and really critiqued it and have given our opinion. Would you suggest that a proper bill would be what you just said, John? A proper bill would be to sever citizenship, uh, U.S. citizenship from tax residency. That would be a bill that we could sink our teeth into. Yeah. Yep. Would that be the solution instead That's of the these other three solution. bills? That is the only thing that solves the problems for all people, all the time, in all circumstances. The only thing that does. Now, yeah. I can send you. Um, uh, Anthony, a link to something I wrote on this about a year ago, where I did sort of a, you know, a first attempt to, you know, redraft four or five provisions of the Internal Revenue Code to show how that might work. Uh, but, you know, it's not as difficult as, as people claim it is. And the United States managed to put a man on the moon. So I right. think that this is achievable for the United States. It's changing the uh, definition, right? As you said, John, well, of what a taxpayer is. Well, yeah. I mean, here, here's the problem, okay? And we've talked about this before. That, I mean, I'm not claiming that I've looked at the tax codes of all the, you know, every country in the world. I certainly have. But the ones I have looked at define tax residency in terms of, you know, here's what it means to be a resident. The problem with the US is it starts from the presumption that everybody in the world's a US tax resident and just provides the carve out, right? So my recollection, and you know, maybe we make this a separate podcast of what I put together about a year ago was uh, simply changing uh, every individual uh, in section one of the internal revenue code to every resident. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, and, then, and then sort of proceed accordingly, right? Yeah. yeah. 
That's right there, right? That's like the beginning, like the first sentence. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, this is not That's, rocket science. This is what no, like well, no, and well, I think you know the point is, you know, and I think maybe the point is is this is to show like because here they're they're all acting like it's impossible, right? Everyone acts like, oh no, you can't do reforms. Like, but it comes from you, so it must be. It's something that came from Washington D.C. So it's Washington D.C. must be able to affect it in some sort of manner. Yeah. But they all act. Oh no, I don't know. Oh, we don't know who controls it, and that's that entire lack of accountability that I think the Supreme Court has addressed. Um, well, it, yeah. it, it can be done. I mean, I'm not claiming that this thing that I wrote a year or so ago is, you know, the. I mean, what it is, it's just sort of the beginning of the discussion that, you know, put together. Well, you know what, when you, well, you know what, I think that'd be a great topic for next time, because when you, when you propose a problem, when you point out a problem, it's a good idea to propose a solution. Well, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And this is a simple solution. It's certainly simpler than the Tax Simplification Act. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it absolutely is, but it also, it actually solves the problem. I mean, I would right. note also, since we're um, in the uh, in unanticipated deep discussion of this today, that there are two ways of achieving this. One is legislatively, and that's the post that I'll send you. But the other way to do it is through regulation. Now we have, right. Go back to mm. the of our discussion, West Virginia and EPA, uh, because... I mean, you know, to make a long story extremely, extremely short, um, basically, so we have the word every individual is subject to worldwide taxation. It's only by treasury regulation that they pare that down to citizen or resident. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, okay, well, I don't know. That might be a topic right there. Um, yeah, well, this, uh, is, this is the topic of a, of a paper that... Uh, that I wrote with uh, Dr. Karen Alpert and Dr. Laura Snyder. It's called a regulatory fix for citizenship taxation. Right. I remember we're, we were talking about that a couple of years ago. Hey, you know what? Da, 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 here's the way we're trying to do it. I'm like, I don't know if that's going to work, but um, that could work now. Uh, that could really work now. Um, so we might want to revisit that. Because that is a well, I, I think I think a possible topic, and I'm not claiming I know the answer to this or have even thought about it. But you know, one question might be to rethink the regulatory fix for citizenship taxation paper in the context of West Virginia versus EPA. You know whether that makes a difference. I mean, I just don't know because I mean, this yeah, well, we got we got I got to read it more, and I got I'm going to take a look at this. So I think that'd be a great topic for next time. Is, is well, why, with, why don't we start with a legis the legislative right. one? Let's do that uh, first. You know, I mean, I'll, right. send, I'll send this to you. I mean, I said I put it out on Twitter. Uh, yeah, maybe it was yesterday. Somebody asked about it, and uh, I think it'd be it'd be interesting because we might uh, get some interesting comments on it. But uh, you know, I mean, I think that what I do, of course, I think everything I do is reasonable, of course, as to you, but. Um, <laughs> You know, it'd be interesting to get some comments on. <laughs> well, and I would say this too. You know, um, we don't have time to hit comments today, and we get a lot of comments, and, and we'll get to them maybe next time we'll respond to them. And I think a lot of people, it's always like, Anthony, nothing's going to change. Oh, why do you continue with this? Nothing's going to. Oh, change. that's ridiculous. We never, we never get any good news. Why do you guys? You know, why can't you get a lot of sad comments like that? Well, they need to oh, not. Guys, well, they need this, to get this today. This this episode, we really shouldn't have those sad comments, okay? Because this is fantastic friggin' news. Now, there's a lot to do, and a lot to get into, and uh, we're going to be busy. But I think we truly have a framework somehow, some way, whether or not legislative we get a fix, or the legislative, or I'm sorry, whether judicially, if we can get a judicial fix, or perhaps. The threat of the judicial fix will make the Congress people maybe do something a little smarter than what they've been doing. That could happen as well. That's a um, good point. And, and I mean, this is this is this is waking up to Christmas morning and not knowing it's Christmas. That's what this is to me. Wait, oh, we gave you another Christmas this year, and it's now. That's what that's what EPA versus or Virginia, West Virginia right. to EPA is like. I. Her, I'm like, no, that's not really going to happen, is it? And then it happened. And well, it has happened. you know, it, it, it's going to take time and it's going to take a series of uh, 
of decisions, obviously, but what it does is it ends the presumption that these uh, agencies can do anything they want. And uh, right. you know, that is just fantastic news. I mean, believe it or not, yeah. believe it or not, it. Today, the United States is one step closer to actually being a free country. So right. gentlemen, with this, with your lawyer hats on, since yeah. you are lawyers, so you see this as a good thing for Americans overseas. What came yesterday with the, the, only, yeah, yeah. the only positive thing I've ever seen. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I would say. The only thing that actually will will now this motivates it. This gets it going. This gets people ex excited a little bit. Um, and our viewers, you know, you get 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 going on this. Take a look at it. And and it's in this case properly. And this is what's great about the case. It properly put the focus on the real problem. It's not going around yelling at Republicans and Democrats. They're all voting for it anyway. They're all voting for it. It doesn't really matter. It yeah. gets us back to a representative republic where the people who vote for laws you don't like, you know them and can point to them and say, I don't want to vote for that guy again because he's going to vote for that law I don't like. But as it is now, who do you... Who do you vote for if you don't like things? There's no one to vote for. Right, especially no for Americans overseas. It. Nobody, right, well, who do you vote for? No, one, no one's going to change these regula you know, these yeah. agencies are designed yeah. not to be accountable to the people. The Federal Reserve is specifically designed not to be accountable for the people. That was its whole selling point, is that people were too stupid to make their own fiscal monetary decisions. You had to give it to a handful of elite who may own a few banks, but, but they got everyone's good interest at heart. That's what we had to do. And that is something at the core of our, of our Republic, having a private bank handle everything. That's a little weird. Um, but this is what this is going to lead to. This is where we're headed. All of these, on all, all these congressional, con Congress has a mandate by the people to be responsible to the people. Well, Kyle, you get you get that job at Congress. You like it. You don't want to work too hard, so you'll say, you know what? I'll get that check, but I'll have all the regulations do the hard work. And when bad things happen, the regulations are to blame, not me, because hey, who can control them, right? Um, and so that is the thing that we change, and it doesn't matter, right? Because if you could vote for Democrats and Republicans all your life, if you never change the administrative state, it it's it just never changes. Just, yeah. It never changes. It's you have window dressing. Okay, so the color of the drapes are red, not blue. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. We can tell you that. Right. And 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 do not think for a second that most Republicans are completely in love with the regulatory state. What they like to do is pretend they're not because that gets them fundraising. But wouldn't you know, when, when it comes time to raise that debt ceiling, they all come together, man. Republicans and Democrats, and they know how to come together all of a sudden out of the blue. These people didn't like each other. Oh, oh, oh we agree on this. Oh, 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 yeah. So it should be pretty fun. And I think the next week will, uh, next week on July 14th, or no, July 10th, uh, we will be tackling, uh, we'll be starting to take a look at some of the legislative fixes um, to citizenship based taxation. And now with that whip, of maybe judicial action, um, the legislatures might, you know, figure it out. Like, yeah, we need to do something um, before the boom comes crashing down. One of the sort of final comment on these three proposed bills. Um, you know, it's easy to confuse malevolence or evil with stupidity, but it's it's very very clear that whoever wrote these things has no understanding of what the real problems yeah. are. Absolutely none. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's it's quite evident. Well, all right. Well, guys, I think we're going to end it here. Um, so we have some fantastic news and there are things to do. If you want to help, I got to get that link to, uh, and let's get that link to Carolyn Maloney Zoom, right? People are always looking for ways to help. People are always looking for good news. We got both today. Uh, we got great news and we got a way to get Carol Maloney to say, hey, um, are you for this or not? Let's make it clear. Don't dump this on the U.S. Treasury. Don't dump this on anybody else. Dump it on you. You want to be reelected. Are you for this or not? Great question to ask. This is Anthony. Well, I, I think that Go what's ahead. important is to be clear on what this is. OK, so I think the question needs to be, are you in favor 
of changing the law so that U.S. citizens are not taxable just because they're U.S. citizens. Right. There you go. You know, there's a simple question. That's a tax simplification process. <laughs> well, there's a tax that would work. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but, but I think that that's the important question here. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, everyone, thanks you for joining us, and we'll see you next week. For Keith Redmond and John Richardson, this is Anthony Parent of Iris Medic, and thanks for watching.